midfield alongside me for his first time as Albion correspondent the Express and star Joe Massey. Joe, we just witnessed West Brom draw here at Craven Cottage in Fulham. Um, first half was tricky, second half was a little bit better. Uh, tricky, yeah, that's a bit of an understatement, an understatement to be honest, yeah. I thought Fulham were very, very, very good in that first half. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's sort of the, like the, the Fulham started very, very, very well, didn't they? 4 3 3 formation. They had the central midfielders. Harrison Reid, I thought, was absolutely fantastic. He's the guy that has them playing. He, dict he dictates the tempo. He is, he is really the man who makes them tick. And sort of Romain Sawyers um, and Jake Livermore were sort of going, going to him. They were drawn into him a lot. But he was sort of passing them by with his quick thinking and, and, and his quick ball forwards. And they were really, really overrun by that midfield three early on. Tom Kearney, right from the off, you could see he was making these sort of surging runs in behind the Albion defence, and he, they, they threatened from that early on, didn't they, when he sort yeah. of got in behind and cut it back to Cavalero, sort of shot blocked, um, and then obviously he went clean through on goal. I'm not 100% sure if Sam Johnson tipped it onto the bar, if he, if he just if he fired against the bar, but I mean, he was through one-on-one -on -one and, and it hit the crossbar, so I mean, absolutely massive chance. Um, and you could just see those three players were running the game. I think every, everyone in the stadium could see it. And Billich called over Jake Livermore. Um, they just had to get hold of that situation. There's no two ways back. They had yeah. to do it. I think they put they put Pereira on Harrison Reid, didn't they? They put yeah. Pereira on Harrison Reid, and they asked Sawyer sort of to follow Kearney a little bit closer um, because they really were the two danger men for them. Bobby Reid was. And loads of direct running, he was lively in that middle of the park as well, but it was those two Albion really needed to stop. They did stop them, ish. They did stop them, ish, but there's no doubt about it, this is still a very, very good for them side. Um, Create another, create another very good chance, get a couple more chances before the break. And you have to say, Albion were very fortunate, really, um, to get to the break on turf. Certainly happier side at half time, I think. Massively, yeah. I mean, they've had two sort of sniffs of goal, really, both through Charlie Austin. He sort of acrobatically fired over mm. um, from, a, from a furlong cross, and then he sent another header in, into the arms of the keeper, really. I think that was from a Matty Phillips free kick. But, but I would call them half chances. I don't know yeah. about you. Very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Um, very much. I mean, he'd done very, very well to score them. Um, so yeah, they didn't, they didn't have, a, have a lot really going forward. But look, they held, they held on. They held on um, until half time is what they absolutely had to do. Yeah, they certainly did. But it didn't take long in the second half for uh, Anthony Knockart to score. Some question over whether he intended it though. He doesn't look at the goal once. Looks like he's whipping in a ball to Mitrovic to me, but it ends up looping over Johnson Cooper. I know he's going to get some criticism for that. That beats a lot of keepers in this division, I think. Yeah, I mean, we've watched him multiple times now, haven't we? I think he, he hasn't meant there. He, he, he hasn't meant there. He I, never looks at the goal. I, I, I can't see how he's meant it. It's a cross come shot. It's, I mean, I think Johnston's got a little bit of stick on Twitter flat, but to me, that's going to be pretty much, it's just completely out of the blue, really. Yeah. It, it, no one's expecting the ball to end up where it's ended up. But look, you make your own luck in football, and you have to say Fulham would have deserved it from that point. Yeah. Um, and then, they, yeah, they carried on being lively, but then Billich has made a couple of changes, well, three changes, really. Um, and they have completely, oh, they've just completely got beam wear. Um, they have completely changed the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Billich has absolutely massive credit. Big calls as well, weren't they? I mean, if, uh, you, if you're hooking your captain, that is Jake Livermore yeah. at the time, and Matt Phillips, two very well-trusted players, and you're replacing them with players who have, you know, obviously Billich knows and trusts them, but these aren't as big in terms of Albion players. You know. So it was obviously Carl Edwards who came on to replace Phillips, and I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Mm. And look, we had a story, we saw Bilic on Friday at the press conference, and he said the reason why they've made such a good start to the season is the competition for places in those three positions. He's got quality there, absolute quality, um, but they're all under pressure to perform. They're under massive, massive pressure to perform, and you can see that today. Kyle Lev was coming on. I mean, he just gave the team a completely different dimension. He completely he was up against Sessegnon, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and just got past him so many times, sent so many dangerous balls into the box. Kravinovic was it was who came on for Livermore. Thought he looked very, very tidy. Yeah. Diff like different types of player, really, aren't they? But yeah. I thought he did very well when he came on. Um, and then how Robson Carne is interesting. So just ask Billich there. Obviously, obviously there he's got a big choice to make. Can this have all around all how Robson Carne? And it, it, it was just a feeling. It was yeah. just a feeling. So he, he, he just felt this was the game for Hal Robson Carne. Whether whether he was sort of had him in the back of his mind after he scored a hat trick for the reserves um, earlier in the week, but he felt this game was more appropriate, more suited to, to, to him sort of dropping into that number ten role. And for all three, 
were absolutely fantastic. I think, in many ways, um, Bilic has, has earned Albion a point today with his changes. That, that, that first change after 20 minutes, which quite simply had to be made, it absolutely had to be made. And then the three players off the bench, I mean, you need your subs to change your game, and all three of them did very, very well. Yeah, credit to Bilic for that one, and you know, Albion's equaliser comes about. Some question marks over whether there's a foul on Bettinelli. I don't think there is a foul there. I think Austin, they stick the ball on top of him. Austin's there and he's just, he's causing a nuisance. I don't think he actually does anything. He just stands it's still. It's a contact sport, for goodness sake. I mean, like, we can't have that. I mean, you've got, you've got to be able to challenge for the ball. The corner's coming. Look, Albion, but Albion and Bailey hadn't created a lot at that point. They win a corner. Mm. You're thinking, this is a real opportunity here with what they've had in the game. Look. Surely Austin's going to stand by the keeper, isn't he? I mean, but he's flat by the keeper as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And Ajay, in the right place at the right time. I mean, it's, it's a close range header, isn't it? It's only from close range. But I mean, he, he has had an absolutely excellent game. Him and Carl Barley at the back. I mean, Mitrovic, what, what was it before today? What was that? Goals, seven and eight games? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Toes, you weren't ready yeah. for that, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, ready, but he's got a phenomenal goal scoring record. But phenomenal goal scoring yeah. record. He's just walked past us with his little boy. Um, but he didn't get, he didn't really, he had one chance today, straight after Albion scored in the corner. But that moment aside, Barley and Ajay pretty much kept him quiet. And let's be honest, he's probably the best striker in the division, isn't he? He's the, yeah. he's the biggest danger man in the division. So, um, and I thought the fullbacks both did really, really well as well. And Cavalera was much, much quieter after the break. Yeah. Much, much quieter. I don't think they knew how to deal with Ivan Cavalero the first half in particular. He was sticking to the, to the touchline. And I'll tell you what, he was getting acres of space. But Village has clearly had a word. All the players have discussed this. And they've gone, right, we've got to keep this like quiet now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're, defensively, I mean, but Fulham were the better team, they've had 69% possession. I think it, it, in the first at half time it was higher than that, it was in the 70s. They really did dominate yeah. the ball today and they look they're gonna be up there, aren't they? I think they're gonna be up there, but this is an absolutely massive point. Like it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but good teams find a way, don't yeah. they? They yeah. find a way. And for all intents and purposes, with 20 minutes to go, you thought it was gonna come away, maybe with a Fulham one their win. But Alvin have dug in, they've come back again in so many times now, they've come from behind. Yeah. Um, they just deserve massive credit for that. It's a, it's a huge, huge point, I think. It's a massive point. Yeah, and speaking to the fans outside, Joe, lastly, um, a lot of the fans were saying, you know, it's a tough place to come. Some of them, I think, said, I'll tell you what, if you finish above full in this seat, likelihood is you're going to be in the Premier League next year. Is that what I Yeah, you can, you can see why they're saying that, can't you? I mean, they, I have to admit, I was hugely impressed just with that midfoot. I mean, the front, everyone raves about the front three, don't they? Yeah. It's that, yeah. that knockout, Mitrovic, Cavalera, but the midfield three, I mean, Harry Art would have been playing today. I mean, if, if he makes that better, that's incredible because yeah. they are very, very, very good. They, they are going to be up there, you'd imagine. You, you, you would imagine they're going to be up there. Look, Leeds will be strong, won't they? But they do tend to burn out the Elsa side. So, yeah, look, I mean, on today's evidence, two very, very, very good teams. So, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I think Alvin will be up there and you'd expect for them to get there. Fingers crossed indeed. So, a decent result here for Albion. A one or draw, another come from behind result for them, still unbeaten. For the latest on it, make sure you stay with us at Express and Star.